Hey, Alex Army, and welcome back to part three of this free bratting masterclass. If you've missed any part of this series so far, check out the links in this video's description below. But today we're going to break down the differences between brat taming and brat handling. But before we do, let's quickly recap a couple of the key points we've illuminated in the last two videos. Starting with the six main expressions, bratting, backtalking, and expression being on the positive side of the spectrum, and testing, misplaced advocacy, and topping from the bottom being unhealthy or dysfunctional ways to satiate fear, solve depression, and soothe discouragement. And the important point here is that no matter what style of bratting takes place, the ultimate desired result never changes, which is what for my note takers, an increased power gap. Regardless of the style, motivation or method, the unspoken or unacknowledged desire behind it all is to experience a deeper and more intense power gap. Each style simply adds a unique nuance to this objective. So with that being said, let's look at brat taming and brat handling because the approaches could not be more different. And I want you to think of each of these approaches using the analogy of a tennis match, okay? Consider the bratty subtype, regardless of their style or demonstration, as a player on a tennis court. You're on one side of the net, and they keep hitting tennis balls over to your side of the court. Brat handling would be to volley back with the bratty subtype in this mutually pleasing game. Brat taming, on the other hand, would be to set down your net and walk off the court. Please hear me carefully. I am not talking about avoidance. I'm not talking about ghosting. I'm not talking about neglect. That's not what I'm saying. It's called an analogy. This is just simply the analogy I'm using to illustrate the principle. Okay. So in other words, brat handling is about indulging the behavior and brat taming is about shutting it down. Now, if you're critically thinking, you may wonder how brat handling is ever truly effective at achieving the ultimate desired result of that increased power gap between the dom and the submissive. Given the definition, how is that power gap even possible if we're talking about brat handling? And that's a great question. Remember how I said a moment ago that brat handling is about indulging versus shutting down? That right there is precisely how the power gap is created. As a brat handler, the dominant responds with the intensity, aggression, or connection the submissive craves. The dominant as a brat handler widens the power gap that the submissive craves by indulging the desire to banter, challenge, or playfully push back. Now brat taming, on the other hand, widens this power gap by hitting the submissive's actual pain point and withholding dominant engagement or play. Does that make sense? I know this can be confusing. I know this can be confusing and challenging to figure out when you're right there in it. This is where a lot of my dominant coaching clients are. So if you're struggling with that, if you're trying to figure out what is going on in my dynamic, how do I address it? What approach do I use? You don't want to miss my new brat taming bundle over on Patreon. And I've created three amazing new resources to include with this bundle. My bratting decision tree with 45 decision points and 15 possible outcomes. My bratting methodology chart, which uses the framework we're discussing in this series to determine what kind of bratting is taking place and what you can do about it. And finally, my bratting boundaries worksheets for dominance that will help you dominance figure out where your personal limits and boundaries are so you can convey that and train that in your dynamic. Just go over to patreon.com slash alexverotica to get instant access. So the question now is how can or should the dominant determine what path to take handling or taming? And here's the thing, this answer 
cannot and should not be determined by the submissive's behavior, but by the dominant's standard. Oof, let me say that again. The method cannot and should not be determined by the submissive's behavior, but by the dominant's standard. Now, hang with me. I know this may seem counterintuitive, but let me break it down. Here's what I am not saying. I am not saying that you should ignore the submissive. I am not saying that you should mindlessly employ rote responses. I am not saying that careful consideration should not be taken to determine appropriate responses on a case by case basis. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying is that the standard comes before the expectation. An expectation for adherence is illogical without a set standard for acceptable behavior. You feel me? You picking up what I'm throwing down? That means dominance that it's your responsibility to set the standard and draw a very clear line between bratting methods you welcome or tolerate versus attitudes and actions you find disrespectful or damaging to your dynamic. And that's exactly why I've created my bratting boundaries worksheet for you dominance, because this is going to help you set the appropriate standards with your submissive. But a crucial point here, one we cannot overlook is to use clear terms when setting these bratting boundaries. Okay. So if playful acts of bratting are allowed, but backtalk is not, then you need to use separate terms to delineate the different behavioral expectations. All right. If this is a positive negative thing and bratting, backtalking and expressive acts are all allowed, but testing misplaced advocacy and topping from the bottom, as we discussed in contrast, the last two videos, those are not acceptable. You need to use different words for each category such as feisty for the three positive bratting methods and disrespectful for the three toxic motivations. Does that make sense? Clear language here is so important because the submissive has to know exactly where that line is. If you're going to believe the best about your submissive, if you're going to believe that they want to please you, they want to obey you, they're not trying to step out of line, then that line has to be made extremely clear to them. And that's your responsibility to do so. But you first dominance have to determine where your line is, where your boundary is. All right. So LX army, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I really hope you found this content helpful. If so, be sure to like subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and share this video with a friend who could benefit from this wisdom and make sure you have those notifications turned on. So you won't miss next week's video where I'm giving you a simple, but powerful process to handle your feisty submissive successfully. Mm -hmm.